We said last week that God is busy raising up transitional people. And God is raising up transitional people at pivotal points who will have a turnaround anointing to transform the lives of people whom they touch. So I want to ask you this morning, are you one of those transitional people of God? Hallelujah. And where does it start? In your own family. Yes. You could be the only one in your family that's serving God. Maybe your children at this time have moved away from the things of God. Maybe your parents at this time have moved away from the things of God. Maybe brothers and sisters have moved away from the things of God. All God needs is one one transitional person yes. at a pivotal point to turn the things around yes. so that that family can serve God. I believe there are callings that God is placing on entire families in these days Hallelujah. that we are living in now. Amen. So listen, if your son or your daughter is not serving God right now, don't lose heart. Don't lose heart because God's busy Amen. raising up yes. transitional people. And we said last week, what will happen with transitional people? You are going to reclaim your spiritual blessings yes. that belongs to you and your family. You are going to be the first one, but you will face distinctly unique challenges. Remember the challenges you're going to face. Listen to me carefully. The Lord showed me this this morning. There are going to be challenges that you're going to face that's going to be difficult to explain to other people because they will not understand because they're not at the same level spiritually yes. that you are. Yeah. And it's not because you're any better. When you, The higher you go in the spirit, the more you serve, by the way. So there's no thing of, of degrees of, of, of accolades. Listen, the higher you go with the Spirit, all that happens is God, that God gives you a higher spiritual address. I'll explain that, and that's prophetic. I'll explain that another time. But God will give you a higher spiritual address, which is higher authority in the things of the Spirit. There I gave you the answer anyway, but that's a whole sermon on its own. You will also have heightened spiritual insight as you break down strongholds so that Jesus can emerge as the strong man over your family. Amen. Then we said, you must refuse to be offended. Guys, do not take offense. Listen to me. Do not take offense. Do not get offended. Yeah. Offenses will keep you bound. Yes. Yes. Remember, the only reason why you need to forgive people is not for their sake necessarily. It's for you to be at peace. Amen. God wants you at peace. Amen. His word says, I've called my people to peace. You must be fierce in prayer and you must love intentionally. Even those who are very unlovable. How do, how do we say it? Do you also have people that come across your path? You see, I'm not even finished with a sentence. You know exactly where I'm going with this. Where you have to, I call them EGR cases. Do you know EGR? It's got nothing to do with a Johannesburg hospital. An EGR case means extra grace required. You all have those people in your lives. And I believe God sends them on purpose. It's to test you. To see where you are at. To see if you will produce patience in your life. And loving kindness. Listen, as a transitional person, you have to do it God's way. Amen. God's going to give you a voice. Those of you who are transitional people, and you are seated here this morning, you are here. If you're a transitional person, God's going to give you a voice. It's going to be a voice of anointing and a voice of authority. People will recognize it just like they perceived in there what we read in Nehemiah. They're going to perceive that you are from God. God is giving you a God-ordained stubbornness. I, I like that one. I need a strong anointing on God anointed, appointed stubbornness. Because we as Afrikaans people coming from the free state, we are automatically stubborn. But when God still places a God given stubbornness on top of the stubbornness, you are stubborn, brother. Man, and I tell you, no matter what the enemy throws at you, no matter what the devil comes with, no matter what anybody says, even these EGR cases, when they come around, you're going to have a God ordained stubbornness stubbornness and say, I'm going to stand my ground. And having done all to stand, I stand. 
We need some of those in the body of Christ. Come on now. As you make way for Him in your family, a task that will require your entire lifetime. What was this is like for next month? No, no. This is a commitment that you made. The pressure of this turnaround will figuratively turn you into a diamond in the end. It's going gonna, it's gonna to shave off all the rough edges and God's going to polish you. Hallelujah. You will be that beacon of light and that radiant voice of hope. The Holy Spirit, I believe, is saying future generations in your family will line up to point back to your life and your light and they will say, I want to be just like him. I want to be just like her. You are the godly influence in your family. I am so tired, so tired of hearing about generational curses. I cannot remember when last I heard somebody speak about generational blessings. Tired of hearing it. But pastor, what about, and they've got a way they say, what about generational curses? And I say, well, what about Jesus? Yes. <laughs> Show me a generational curse that Jesus, and I'm going to use South African talk right now, that Jesus didn't club six love on the cross. Yes. Show me. Come on. So in other words, you want to say to me that this, this no, but pastor, you know what? Uh, uh, there's generational curses. <coughs> there can only be generational curses on a family who doesn't have Jesus. Yes. Pastor, do you believe in generational curses? Yes, I do. Until a person in that family accepts Christ as Lord and Savior, who then stands up as a transitional person, as a pivotal point, with an anointing and say, it's up to here and no further. When I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and the it is finished became a part of my life, my generations below me became blessed. Generation upon generation upon generation are blessed. Blessed, I say. So listen, there are three words there that we need to take careful, careful <coughs> attention of. And I put it at the bottom, it's at the top of that picture as well. Some of you may not able, be able to see that, so I'll put it at the bottom. God is busy repairing. He's busy repairing lives. If you were away from God, and you're back and you feel broken and shattered, I want to say to you that God is busy repairing you. He's the greatest restorer and repairer in the universe. Yes, God's busy repairing. But after He's repaired, just like, just like Nehemiah, just like Nehemiah, He had to repair first. It says, and the gaps were being closed. What's it? That's being repaired. Gaps are going to close in your life. And it's going to become whole. It's going to become complete. But then after that, He rebuilds. But first of all, He has to and my wife asked me, will you please elaborate on when it comes to the thing where it says they had, they, it was difficult to build because of all the rubbish. Yeah. And she said to me, I wish you took that a bit further. <laughs> Why don't you do that? And I said, yes, I will. <laughs> but not this morning. <laughs> I need to deal with the rubbish. To show you, because the Holy Spirit is still busy showing me. I've got a list, but He's still busy showing me of why at times we, we battle with the rebuilding process because of some of the rubbish that is there. So hold on to that one. That's coming. And then lastly, God, after He has rebuilt, He reinforces it. Amen. God buttresses that wall. Those of you who know about building will know what a buttress is. He will buttress that wall. He will put supports on that wall to make it strong. Yeah. So listen carefully this morning. God is busy rebuilding and restoring your life. Now, that wall was finished in how many days did we say? 52 days. Now, what I want to do this morning by closing. Guys, we started with this message last week. The Lord showed me you need to carry on, but we're not done with it. But what I want you to do is with me, please, as a congregation, we need to say this together. I'm actually jumping forward now, but we are going to declare this again when I'm going to be talking about the stuff that consists of or what the rubbish is all about and why some people's lives are... You see, some people, they battle to get rebuilt. 
because the rubbish is going to be taken away and we're going to deal with that. But this morning now, as a congregation, I want you to focus with me. Those of you who cannot see on the board, I don't care at this point if you move forward, if you move to another position, but we are going to say this together. We are going to make this decree this morning as God's people. Are you ready? Yes. All right. I'm going to go at the count of three. One, two, three. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. That's it. We're going to say it. I love God and I keep His commandments. Therefore, the blessing of God is on my family for a thousand generations. My sons and my daughters will prophesy. They shall dream dreams and have visions from the Lord. My family is growing in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Every generational blessing will be revealed and stewarded in my family line. No blessing, gift, talent, or divine ability shall be lost. Tell your reading. I can read it. Follow the Holy Spirit and serve the Lord wholeheartedly. I decree over the men in my family, they will serve the Lord. I decree over the women in my family, they will serve the Lord. I decree over every child, grandchild, great grandchild, and beyond, they will serve the Lord. I decree the Holy Spirit to be the ruling spirit of my family and the name of Jesus to be our strong tower. Let's give the Lord a praise. Yes. 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 And as a transitional person, you this morning are receiving an anointing for that breakthrough Amen. and turn Amen. around from the Holy Spirit yes. because there is so much grace Amen. just for you. Amen. I don't want to go any further with this because I know it's, it is a heavy word. It's a strong word. And there's, there are many key pointers that I brought out this morning. Yeah. And there are some strong things that I said that I believe has taken root in your heart and in your spirit for you to be that transitional person. I want to say to you guys this morning, please do not settle for the status quo. Please do not settle for normal. Normal sucks. Whatever normal is. We're not supposed to be normal, guys. Then we read in 1 Peter that we are peculiar. We're God's peculiar people. We are a set-apart people. We're supposed to act differently to the world. You cannot look the same. You need to stand out. The light of Christ needs to shine in your heart and in your life. Amen. Be that person that God's called you to be. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. That our lives have been rebuilt, restored, and now it's being reinforced. I thank you that by the power of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our lives are... <laughs> Lord, I see us standing on the walls, looking at the work that had been done in miracle time, 52 days, that we can stand on this wall and say, Lord, I honor you, praise you, glorify you, that my life in the way that you have rebuilt it and you're still busy, that it's going to be for me to become a transitional person at the pivotal point to turn things around in my family, to turn things around in my workplace, to turn things around in my business, to turn things around, Father, in my finances, to turn things around in my ministry that you've called me to do. Whatever it is, today is my turnaround. So Jesus, I honor you that everything that I've done up to now has not been for nothing. Everything counts for something. I thank you that seeds have been planted in my spirit that's busy taking root, that's going to grow and develop, and it's going to bear fruit. But here's the thing, the Lord has shown me, you are going to have little of the fruit that you're going to bear, it's going to be for others. Did you get that? You're going to do the work, but others are going to benefit. You say, well, that's unfair. Excuse me, what did Jesus do? He paid the ultimate price, he's the firstborn from the dead, and he said that we are the ones that's going to be born after that in him, so we are also in Christ receiving all the benefits of what He did. We are the beneficiaries of the entire state. You've heard me say that. It's ours. It belongs to us. But He did all the work. Father, this morning we thank You. We can stand strong and secure in the things of Christ. If you're here this morning and you say, I believe God's busy preparing me to be that transitional person. Just stand to your feet. Stand up.